Welcome. Our lecture for today is the sensory pathway of the posterior head region downwards to the entire body. Our previous lecture on the sensory pathway was done on the upper head region and the face. So this will be limited to the posterior head region and the remaining part of the body. And this is our lecture guide. By the end of this class, we should be able to describe the dosa columnar lemnisci pathway. Should be able to talk about the spinothalamic system. Also, the sensory homoculus. The function of the sensory pathway, as we described in our previous lecture on the sensory pathway of the anterior head region and the face, which is strictly supplied by the trigeminal nerve. We say that they help in the transmission of stimuli, which could either be touch, the touch could be fine or crude. Fine touch means a type of touch that can be sensed and localized. You can feel it and you know where it is coming from. Why crude touch is also known as light touch is a kind of touch that is being perceived but cannot be localized. You feel it, but you cannot locate where it is coming from. Or you have tactile sensation, which are basically touch sensation on the skin or vibration. And we've also talked about proprioception, which is the perception of the body in space or the sensation of the change in position of the body. And also when you have pain on your body or also change in temperature, which can also be perceived through the sensory innervation. And all these stimuli are being perceived on the sensory cortex, where the sensory information are being processed, integrated, and also perceived. We've also described this in our previous lecture. We said that the general sensory innervation can be divided into two broad regions, which are the anterior upper head and the face. Then we have the posterior head region downwards to the remaining part of the body. We've said that the anterior upper head and the face is supplied by the trigeminal nerve, while the posterior part of the head downwards to the remaining part of the body supplied by the spinal nerves. This is going to be the center of our lecture for today. We've described the anterior upper head region and also the face in our previous lecture. You can go and check that out. So the posterior head region downwards, we say it's been supplied by the spinal nerves. This is the configuration of the body. This is the anterior upper head. This is the the face, and this is the posterior head region downwards. So this is where the stimuli is being taken off and they run through to enter into the spinal cord. And from the spinal cord, they will need to ascend up for them to reach the cerebral cortex where the sensation will be interpreted. So we can imagine this sensory stimuli entering into the spinal cord and needs to run their course upward. It means they need to ascend. So this is where we have the generation of the name, the ascending pathway. So this tract we need to run upward to ascend before they can be terminated on the cerebral cortex. The ascending pathway can be broadly divided into two. We have the conscious tract. The conscious tract are perception that we are conscious of, that we are aware of, so to say, and they can be further divided into two. We have the dosa columnar lemnisca pathway, and we have the anterior lateral spinothalamic system. This dosa columnar lemnisca pathway is responsible for fine touch, touch that can be sensed and localized. You can feel it and you can determine where it is coming from also vibration, and also conscious proprioception. Conscious proprioception, a good example of that is when we close our eyes and still be able to put our hand on our nose because we are consciously aware of changing body movement. So we can't be well guided to easily touch our nose even when our eyes is being closed. The anterior lateral spinothalamic system is for crude touch, that is light touch that can be sensed but cannot be localized, pressure, and also pain and temperature. And all these tracks end in the cerebral cortex. So no matter where they are coming from, no matter where their synapses are, they all finally terminate in the cerebral cortex. For the second subdivision, which is the unconscious tract, this is the spinocerebellar tract. From the name, the hand in the cerebellum. And what they carry are unconscious proprioception. A very good example of unconscious proprioception is during walking. We are able to walk easily and guide ourselves around why? Because the change in muscle length is being sensed in a region in the cerebellum, and this tends to 
process the information and guide us accordingly without limping over any objects. We are not aware of this change in the length of Mosul, but information are being gathered from that region and sent to the cerebellum where they are being interpreted, and this is able to guide us through. So we are going to be restricting this lecture to the conscious tract, which we've said earlier, and this basically include the dosocolomedial lemniscal pathway and also the anterior lateral spinothalamic tract. So let's first look at the dosa colum lemniscal pathway. This pathway, we said that they are responsible for fine touch, tactile sensation from the skin, vibration, and also conscious proprioception. But this name also arises from particular regions where this tract run into, and that is the way anatomy is. They can be linked to regions where the fibers run through. So we have the dosal column of the spinal cord, which is the human body structure. The sensation from the posterior edge region downwards, the remaining part of the body have been taken up. They enter into the spinal cord. The region of the spinal cord where they enter into is the dosal column. We will still go a bit deeper into this to understand where this region is located. It enters into the dosal column region of the spinal cord. And that is where a section of the name is being drafted from the dosal column. And this is the dosal column region in the spinal cord where the first set of neurons enter into. Then the second name is the medial lemniscus. This name is being drafted from the second other neuron. That's the second set of neuron. When they move from the medulla, they decussate and they ascend into the thalamus. So there's a group of fibers or tracts around this region. And this is the medial lemniscus. So combination of this region and this region form the name of the dosal columnar lemniscus pathway. You can see how interesting this is. So let's go to the pathway and see how they run. The dosal columnar lemniscus pathway is made up of three groups of neurons. We have the first order neuron, the second order neuron, and the third order neuron. So that means there are three sets that run from one point, the synapse, another one picks it up, synapse, and they now finally terminate in the cerebral cortex. So let's see how the first order neuron runs, the first other neurons carry sensory information from the peripheral region, that's the posterior head region and the lower part of the body. So they take this, they run and enter into the dosal column of the spinal cord. This is the first other neuron. They then ascend upward into the medulla. You can see that this first other neuron tends to run a very long course. They enter into the spinal cord. They do not synapse in the spinal cord. They further ascend and enter into the medulla where they finally synapse. Let's quickly look at the general configuration of the spinal cord. We know that the spinal cord is made up of the white matter and the gray matter. This entire region is the white matter and this dotted space is the gray matter. You can see the age presentation that it presents. This age pattern, uh, further subdivided into different regions based on where they are placed. The anterior region of the gray column, which is broader, is termed the ventral horn. We have on the lateral side, the lateral horn. Then we have on the posterior side, the dosal horn. The white matter in the anterior region is termed the ventral column. Then we have the lateral column, which is the white matter in the lateral region. Then we have the white matter in the posterior region, which is called the dosal column. This is the region where the first other neuron passes through. In the dosal column, the lemniscal pathway. So this is specific region in the spinal cord through which they run. When they come from the outside, they pass through this region and they ascend upward. Let's go a bit more detail in the first other neuron. They do not just pass through the dosal column as they wish, there are specific patterns onto which they are arranged. First of all, it is good for us to know that the dosa column is further subdivided into two. We have the fasciculus gracile, which is the medial region, and we have the coniatus, which is the lateral region. This medial part, which is called the gracile, the fibers that passes through the fasciculus gracile are fibers that are coming from the lower part of the body, that's from thesis downwards. So fibers from this region will pass through the fasciculus gracilis. 
why fibers coming from the upper part of the body, that's the thoracic vertebra level six upward, we pass through the fasciculus corneatus. So there's a kind of positional arrangement around this region. Fibers do not just move as they like, they are arranged depending on the region of the body where they are coming from. If it is the upper part of the body, they will move through this lateral region. And if it is the lower part of the body, they will pass through this media region to enter into the medulla oblongata. The first other neuron, we said that they run from the peripheral system, they pass through the spinal cord, then they go into the medulla. So what is their next step of action? What do they do in the medulla? Well, in the medulla, we have the corneatus nucleus and they have the gracile nucleus. So you can see that the name corresponds. So as they move from the spinal cord, the next destination of the first order neuron is to enter into the medulla. So fibers that are coming from the fasciculus gracile, which is the medial region, they will enter into the nucleus gracile of the medulla. And fibers that are coming from the fasciculus corneatus will enter into the corneatus nucleus of the medulla oblongata. So they enter into their corresponding name nucleus. So when they get into the medulla, they synapse with the corresponding name nucleus. So the first synaptic point in the dosal columedial lemnisca pathway occurs in the medulla. So the next point of action is that the second order neuron will pick it from the nucleus corneatus and the nucleus gracile. There is a decussation. They cross to the other side. So as they cross to the other side, their fibers are now being collected. That is a group of axon, which is also called tract because they are embedded within the central nervous system. They run upward and their next site is the thalamus. It also means that from the right side, the first order neuron from this region will go upwards to this region and also decussate. This is just a one pattern presentation. This alignment is also seen on the other side where they run upward, they also decussate and they go upward. You can see that there is a contralateral pattern of movement because fibers on the right will cross to the left and fibers on the left will also cross to the right. So there is a contralateral pattern of movement. The medial lemniscus. Remember, we talked about the trigeminal lemniscus when we say they are a group of tracks that tends to run from the second order neuron down to the thalamus. Also, in this part, we have the medial lemniscus, which are a group of axons of the second order neuron. So, these medial lemniscus are from the nucleus connectus and nucleus gracile of the medulla. They decussate and also run upward to the thalamus. The second order neuron synapse on the ventral posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus. Then from there, the third order neuron picks it and the now synapse on the cerebral cortex. So the second conscious tract is the anterior lateral spinothalamic tract, responsible for true touch, pressure, pain, and temperature. So this is what they carry. This anterior lateral spinothalamic part way is subdivided into two tracts. That's the anterior spinothalamic tract and the lateral spinothalamic tract from the name anterior lateral. What the anterior part carries is the crude touch and pressure, while the lateral carries pain. This subdivision is a functional classification. The two subtracts run in the same pathway. The only difference is that what they carry is different. Just like the dosa columnar lemnisca pathway, the spinothalamic tract also is made up of three sets of neurons. The first order neuron, the second order neuron, and the third order neuron. So for their first order neuron, they run from the posterior head and the remaining part of the body and they enter into the spinal cord. When they enter into the spinal cord, they ascend upward a bit within the spinal cord, synapse in the spinal cord, unlike the previous that ascends to the medulla before a synapse occurs. The region where it synapses is a substantial gelatinosa. This is like the tip of the dosal horn of the spinal cord. This is the dosal horn, the lateral horn, and the ventral horn. So a tip of the dosal horn is where they finally synapse. The second order neuron, of course, we pick it up from this region. That's the substantial gelatinosa region of the spinal cord. Then they ascend upward to the thalamus. In this image, we can see that the tracts are actually two. We have the anterior spinothalamic tract and we have the lateral spinothalamic tract. You can see that they run in the same 
pattern. The only thing is that they carry different stimuli. And the third other neuron finally takes it up from the thalamus. And the specific region where they take this up is the ventral posterior lateral nucleus before they finally synapse on the cerebral cortex. So the sensory cortex, if you go through our previous lecture, we've tried to describe where they are located on the cerebral cortex. We said that there's a central sulcus, while behind it is where we have the postcentral gyrus, which is also called the sensory cortex. So this is the region where sensory innervation are interpreted from different parts of the body. Another thing that I want us to look into is the sensory homoculus. This sensory homoculus is a structural neurological map. It's like a pictorial presentation of the entire sensory cortex. On the sensory cortex, there are also subregions where different regions of the body are sensed. Like the lower limb is in the upper part, the, followed by the hand region, then the face in this region. So the sensation within the face cannot be felt in other region in the cerebral cortex apart from this lower part. So these are specifically designed for the face. So it is good for us to know that the entire cerebral cortex interpretation of different regions are specific even within it. And they run in an inverted pattern. You can see the head being in the lower part and the lower limb being in the upper part. So it's like it's structured in an inverted version. Even on the sensory cortex, the different regions of the body are not proportionate. You can see that the head region takes like a larger space. So you can have a small region of the body occupying a larger space in the cerebral cortex. So there is no proportionate marking. What is actually responsible for the size on the cerebral cortex where sensations are felt is the number of sensory connections that are in that region. It means that in the face, we have a lot of sensory connection in the face. And that is why on the cerebral cortex, it occupies a larger space. And regions that are seen with lower sensory connection are seen on the cerebral cortex occupying a small region. So this is the image of how the sensory innervation of the body is being presented on the cerebral cortex. You can see that the face, the limbs occupies a greater chunk, and that is why they tend to be presented in bigger sizes. And you can see the other regions of the body, so we're presented to. So this is a task that I want us to look through. And the first one says that we should describe the dosa columnar pathway pattern using an illustrative diagram. This should come very easy for us going through this lecture slide. The second question is, with the head of a diagram, describe the spinothalamic tract. We've said that the spinothalamic tract is further divided into the anterior spinothalamic tract and the lateral spinothalamic tract. And they are responsible for carrying crude touch, pressure, pain, and temperature. Then the third one is briefly describe the somatosensory homoculus. This has been well explained, and I hope that we should be able to tackle this. Then we can also want to try these multiple choice questions. And the first one reads that the secondary neurons in the spinothalamic tract synapse with the tertiary neuron in the what? Is it in the medulla? Is it in the cerebellum? Is it in the thalamus or in the midbrain? We should know that the secondary and tertiary are the second order and the third order neurons, respectively. Then the second one is fibers from the dosa columnar lemniscal system. Hey, cross to the opposite side in the medulla oblongata are divided into fasciculus gracilia and fasciculus corneatus in the spinal cord. Include sensory neurons that exit the medulla and synapse in the thalamus, or is it all of the above? Then the third question is the cranial homolog of the spinothalamic pathway is what? We said that the spinothalamic pathway carries pain and temperature. In the sensory innervation of the anterior head and face region, which in the trigeminal part, we also carry pain and temperature. And that is definitely the cranial homologue of the spinothalamic pathway. So is it the spinal trigeminal pathway, is it mesencephalic trigeminal pathway, or the main sensory pathway, or even the dosa columnar lemniscal pathway? So thank you for watching. So I'll be expecting questions in the comment section.